Welcome back, folks, to some more Game Holder Awesomeness. Going to take a little turn here on uh, what I usually do for LPs, and we're going to be doing Eric the Unready, which is a graphic text adventure game. Uh, I really haven't done any of these so far, and I've been wanting to do quite a few of them for a while uh, because of uh, all the text that I get to read and I get to really exemplify on my voice skills, which you have all grown to love. And uh, also, there is really, this will be the first true LP of this game on the uh, net that is worth a shit watching. Uh, I believe some other little punk ass gave it an attempt, but after reviewing a couple of his videos, I realized it was nothing but pure dog shit. So we're going to go ahead and give this game the proper LP that it deserves. You might be wondering how come the window is bigger than the DOS box window. Uh, that's because the actual full game window is going to grow to 640 by 480 instead of 600 by 400 whereas the intro is only 640 by 400 Also, I do own this game, brand new and sealed, so uh, I might be doing a text adventure uh, Let's Explore later on with uh, games like this and Zork and uh, all the other kinds of its ilk to take a little bit better look at the boxes and the kind of contents that these games came with back in the day. Without further ado, I bring you Eric, the Unready. Legend Entertainment Company presents Eric the Unready. And it came to pass that Sir Eric rode out from the castle of King Fudd the Bewildered to do battle with the Knight of the Black Pauldron. Then did our goodly knight gaze upon the face of the opponent, and it befell that he forgot the words of challenge he must utter in order that the contest might commence. Uh, therefore did Eric consult the most ancient and sacred tome of chivalry, how to joust. Mm. Mm. Oops. Fuck. But Sir Eric's visor did smash shut upon his face, and the sacred book did fall onto the ground. And when the knight made once again to raise up his visor, then did the point of his lance become impaled upon the branches above. Gadzooks! Both Sir Eric. My lance is stuck! <laughs> there came a deluge of apples, which did unhorse the dread foe. Thus did Eric the Unready become victorious over the dreaded knight of the Black Pauldron. On the eve of that same day, Duke Theobald, the Erratic, threw open his feasting hall to celebrate the defeat of the dread knight, who had held the Duke's castle in his thrall. A toast, cried Sir Eric. Oh shit! The guest, sensing impending disaster, fled for their lives. Get the fuck out of here, this fuck- Oops! Alright. So, obviously, Eric the Unready is kinda clumsy. The following morn, the shop steward of the King's Union, local number 704, confronted Sir Eric. Let me review for you the highlights of your career thus far. Why still in night school, you impaled an instructor who was standing next to a dummy during jousting practice. Last month, you burned down Ulrich's house of torches when you left the door open on a windy day. And yesterday, you destroyed the feasting hall of Duke Theobald the Erratic. From now on, you will receive only those quests which I deem suitable for your obviously limited talents. The shop steward glances down at the paper in his hands and says, 
Here's the perfect thing. This morning, a farmer came into the Union Hall and said that they're passing, which had turned only a daughter into a pig. Your quest today, Sir Eric, is to go to his farm and break the enchantment by kissing that pig. There's your work slip. I don't want to see your face again until the task is done. That's not cool. So here we are at the game interface. Uh, we'll go over this a little bit really quickly here for those of you who aren't familiar with this type of graphic adventure. In the upper right, of course, we have the cool graphics. In the bottom right, we have the text that usually comes up in response to your actions. We have the items and list of available things that you can fuddle around with in the center there. Above that is a compass with the directions in which you may go. To the left are a list of uh, basically actions that you can perform, burn, drop, enter, examine. They give you an idea of the different kinds of things you can do. And in the upper left, of course, is the kind of the settings, if you will. You can get help, you can make half screen, you can get text only, you can look in your inventory, you can get a map. Uh, of course, if you click on inventory here, you're holding a work slip. You get a map which kind of keeps track of you and where you are. That's pretty cool. Not a lot of graphic adventures have those. All right. There's going to be a lot of talking, reading, and Ron Stock Game Hordian voiceovers going on here. So if you're not in the mood for a bedtime story, you probably want to go fuck yourself and watch something else. Well, here we are, says the farmer. He opens the gate and brings you into the farmyard. He points to the pig running around in the yard and says, There she is! One good kiss, I'm to do it! Slowly you approach the pig. She eyes you warily. You bend down to kiss her, but she squeals in terror and bolts into the privy. Seconds later you hear a squishy, Now you've done it! complains the farmer. Some hero you are! Well, don't just stand there. Get to cracking! Now, of course, there are a ton of things that you can do. There's a ton of different options in which you can play around with. We'll be messing around with some of that stuff. For instance, you can type down here, eat shit. Okay, maybe there isn't shit here to eat. So you can type in things this way, or of course you can also um, click over here, talk to, and it'll kind of put it in there for you. Tell me about your daughter again. A passing witch turned her into a pig, and now she's fallen into the privy. Your job is to get her out, and you've got to kiss her and break the enchantment. Will you sign my work slip now? You're not done yet, lad. I'll sign it when you finish the job. I'm sorry I killed your rooster when I first got here. I'd like to replace him. Fine, come back tomorrow morning. I'll introduce you to the hens. What's in the barn? Just a bunch of old veterinary supplies. You can keep whatever you find. Been nice talking you. I'd better get back to work. What's the moon, the farmer? Nice smile, but I think it's sideways. Now cover up your ass and get on with it. You find the farmer staring up at the farmer from flat on your back. Nice try, city boy, he drawls. Now get back to work. Alright, so let's head west into the barn. The barn is old but clean. The floor has been swept and everything seems pretty much in its place. The cows are well groomed and they are contently chewing on their cuds in a manner vaguely reminiscent of the farmer. Set into the wall is a closed medicine chest. A rope hangs on the wall and exits the farmyard lies to the east. Alright, well, let's get the rope. I like to type my answers in uh, just because that's what I'm used to growing up on the King's Quest and Space Quest Sierra era. Take your rope from the peg. Your score has gone up by two. Note, you can activate and deactivate score change notification using the notify command. We'll just leave it. Let's look at the moo cows. 
look at the cows. They look just as stupid as cows in their own world. You open the medicine chest and discover a vial, a bottle, and a flask. You can just type get all to get everything. So we take the vial, the bottle, and the flask. The presence of cobwebs suggests that the farmer hasn't been involved in any animal husbandry recently. I'm betting that the cows regard this a good thing. Alright, so at this point we can look at our inventory. We're holding some cow pectate, some hog wild, some torties, and a rope and a work slip. Let's look at the cow pectate. Many ways to look in this game. Okay. Look at cow pectate. Bovine binding agent. Let's look at the hog wild. Oops. Porcine aphrodisiac. Alright, we have an aphrodisiac for port. Porky the pig. Let's also look at the torties, probably for turtles, maybe? Testudinal muscle relaxant. Oh, well that kind of, that kind of muscle relaxant. Alright, let's go back to our picture here. Of these fine young cows. We're going to feed cow pectate to the cow. Cow, if I could spell right, it can be one thing. Believe me, if the cows had a problem with diarrhea, you'd be the first to know. Alright. Let's go back east. And into the privy. You can also click on items, like this. That'll take them as well. And we have a Taurus Inquirer here. The Feasting Hall of Duke Theobald the Erratic burned to the ground last week during a celebratory luncheon honoring the retirement of the Knight of the Black Pauldron who had held the castle in his thrall for the past 20 years. It was time for me to move on, the Knight said prior to the blaze. I've got a nice piece of land picked out near the inner sea. People there seem nice. I can terrorize them part-time and still have plenty of evenings and weekends free for collecting shells. According to the ancient prophecy, King Fudd the Bewildered will die this coming Saturday. The Taurus Inquirer has learned that he plans to spend his last week of life closeted in the chambers playing with toy soldiers. And the personal ads read, SWF Capulet seeks handsome and daring partner for life. Must have good balcony climbing skills. Send woodcut and resume to Friar Lawrence. No Montagues, please. That's of course a, uh, what you might call it, Romeo and Juliet mockery or joke, if you will. Help wanted. Looks like there's a bunch of pages here we missed. Holy Grail tours. Don't have time to track down the Grail on your own. Why reinvent the wheel? Join one of our tours. The Quest Bus leaves daily from Glastonbury Square. Call 1-800-BUSTERS and ask for Shay. Lost. One warship fully manned. Reward contact W. Bly, Pagaren Island.
take a shit. Go poop. Go shit. <laughs> Go shit north. Shit. For that kind of action, you should really be looking into the spellcasting series of games, which we will be, by the way. We'll be doing spellcasting 101, 102, and 103. They are on the hit list. Alright, so the pig, I guess, is in the shitter here. We'll put the rope on the hook here. And we'll go down. You grab the rope and squeeze yourself down through the narrow hole in the bench. Once through, you slide the rest of the way down in the rope and fall into the muck below with the disgusting up to your knees in it. <laughs> You're up to your knees in shit. A rope hanging from above provides the only exit. A startled pig is here, eyeing you warily. Let's get some shit. You scoop up two big fistfuls of shit and squeeze real tight. It oozes out between your fingers. You haven't had this much fun since the time you were a kid and you told Mary Jane a joke while she was drinking her milk and made her cough it up through her nose. Oh, it smells like shit! A waiter appears out of nowhere, sets up an elegant table and lays a place setting for one. He lights the candelabra and says, Our specials today are shit paint, shit on a glass, roast shit, broccoli and shit Florentine. For wine we have, we have... He stops mid-sentence and slaps himself on the forehead. Oh my gods, we're all out of wine! You can't eat shit without wine! I'm so embarrassed! He packs up his materials and disappears. We kiss the pig. Nothing happens. Perhaps the enchantment will only be broken if the farmer is present. Okay, well let's pick the pig up. You dive in at the pig and manage to wrap your arms around it. But a loud squeal and a quick wriggle loosens your grip and leaves you face down in the shit. You pull yourself to your feet for another try. We need the aphrodisiac. The pig eagerly sucks down the contents of the bottle, which magically vanishes into thin air. A shiver passes through the sow's body and she suddenly seems much more interested in you than before. Without warning, she makes a leap for your leg, wraps her own stubby legs around it and hangs on for dear life, and gives you a little wink wink. You climb back up the rope, dragging the pig along with you. Alright. Let's get our rope back. You pull up the rope and untie it from the hook. Let's pet the piggy. You pet the pig. It wiggles appreciatively. Alright, now let's head southwest here. Back into the farmyard. I've done it, you announced to the farmer. Here's your pig. If you'll just sign the work, slip, then I'll be on my way. The farmer remains expressionless. You're not done yet, lad. That's still my only daughter. You've got to kiss her to remove the enchantment. But remember, no tongue. The pig bats her eyelashes, puckers her lips, and wiggles her haunches suggestively. Slowly your lips approach those of the slime-covered animal. Finally, you close your eyes, take the plunge, and give the pig a resounding smack right on the... on the lips. At that moment, you hear a voice from beyond the gate. Hello, Daddy, I'm back. Did you miss me? I just popped over to Auntie May's to get some apples. She catches sight of your manure-covered figure. Look, who the fuck is this? The pig drops off your leg and trots over to the girl to investigate her apples. The farmer looks embarrassed for about a tenth of a second and says, Well, well, sorry about that. No harm done, though. Why don't you go into... Ah, uh, blah blah blah, I lost my place. Why don't you go into the pond and wash up, and I'll fill out your work slip. So basically, we just swam through shit and kissed a nasty fucking pig for no reason. So let's go ahead and kick the farmer. The farmer dodges the blow. Your foot swings through the empty air and you get dumped on your backside. Sheepishly, you scramble back to your feet. Let's beat the shit out of the- I mean, talk to the girl. Well, I guess is over here behind the fence. 
I'm a mighty knight, fabled in the legend and song. What happened? All right, not sure what the fuck happened there. I'm a mighty knight. I'm a mighty knight, fabled in legend and song. I see. First you fell in it, now you're full of it. I don't think your father likes me. Oh, don't take it personally. He doesn't like any bumbling idiots. Where's your mother, ho? A passing witch cast a spell on her that turned her into a chicken. We were going to ask the wizard to break the spell, but then father decided we could really use the eggs. Would you like to go out with me sometime next month? Sorry, I'll be washing my hair next month. Say, nice apples. Thank you. We grow them big around here. Goodbye, bitch. The girl pulls away and says, Please don't touch my apples. I'm saving them for someone special. The barn is old but clean. The floor has been swept and everything seems pretty much in its place. The cows are well groomed and they are contentedly chewing their cuds. Set into the walls of the medicine chest, you walk into the barn covered head to toe with shit. To the cows you look like a monster from Return of the Swamp Thing. They bolt from their stalls and stampede for the door, knocking out the main strut that holds up. That holds up. That ho where the fuck was I? That holds up the barn. As the barn begins to collapse around your ears, you hear a low rumble and realize from a long experience that this is the time to make your exit. Your score has gone up by 25 points. You're rewarded for stupidity in this game. While trudging the long miles back to the village, you hear hoofbeats behind you. The royal carriage of Princess L'Oreal the Worthy comes over the hill and pulls to a halt beside you. Sir Knight, calls the princess from within the carriage. To the castle, my lady. <laughs> then ride with me in my carriage. Okay. But my troth I cannot, my lady, for I am covered in shit and would be found the presence of one so fair as yourself. <laughs> Ew, nonsense, cries the princess. Open. I like fucking dirty man. You're most kind, milady, to have pity on a poor knight in my condition. God damn, wanna fuck? Think nothing of it. You're Eric, aren't you? I've seen you around the village. I like it when the carriage bounces. Yes, milady, I am the unfortunate he who is barely worthy of the name of knight. Don't be daft, I think a perfectly good night was just run into a bit of bad luck. You keep trying, that's the main thing. If I ever caught in trouble, I'd much rather be rescued by you than one of those stuck-up prima donnas who come preening around the castle. I repeat, wanna fuck? Fear not, milady. No one would dare harm the daughter of good King Ford. Do so would incur the wrath of that flower of chivalry, the knights of the rhomboid table. No one would be so foolish as to take that risk, even for one so beautiful as yourself. Snarf, snarf. Oh, go on, but I hope you're right. I would break my father's heart if anything happened to me. Well, I see we have arrived at the castle. I have to go see him before them, but I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wanna fuck? You awaken to a new day. You are lying on your bed in the castle barracks. You try to get up but discover you can't. You recall that you were so tired last night that you tumbled into bed without removing your armor. After your excursion in the privy, it appears to have been a bad move. Now the armor is rusted shut. Barracks on the bed. These are the Spartan living quarters of those knights who didn't earn enough money to have their own castle. Currently, you are the only resident. 
The only exit is to the east. On the bed, you see a card. All right. So we made it to the next day part of the game. Let's read the card. It's a warranty card from Giovanni's House of Armor that guarantees that your armor will be rust free for one year after purchase. There's a sketch of a suit of armor on the card with your measurements written around along the side of it. Come to think of it, the sketch looks a lot like the one in your game manual. Uh oh, I'm not opening my game for this. You can't move. The armor has rusted around you, trapping you inside. Your squire runs in and shouts, Princess L'Oreal the Worthy has been kidnapped. All knights must. He stops at mid-sentence and wrinkles up his nose. Yeah, what's that smell? He covers his nose and continues. All knights must report to the Union Hall immediately. He runs out. Worthless son of a bitch. Help! You can't move! Your squire returns and says, Let's go, Sir Eric! Everyone's waiting! Only then does he notice your predicament. He starts pulling bits of rusted armor off you while breathlessly filling you in on the details. The princess returned from a carriage ride yesterday, and she retired immediately to the royal baths, which nobody quite understands, because she's already bathed once that day. Anyway, when she was finished, she went to bed early. With her handmaidens went to wake her up, she had disappeared. Now they're going to assign the quest to rescue her, and we're going to miss it unless you get moving. He pulls off the last piece of armor and races out the door. Alright, maybe we can get the fucking card now. If you're looking for help with the interface, press the F1 key. If you're looking for a clue to help solve a puzzle, there are lots of ways to get hints in legend games. Online services like CompuServe, Genie, and Prodigy have dedicated groups of gamers who delight in talking about adventure games and who will give you anything from a vague hint to a specific answer upon request. If you live in the United States, you can also call 1-900-PRO-CLUE. This is our 24-hour hint line, which will cost you 75 cents for the first minute and 50 cents for each additional minute. Legend also publishes hint books for each of our games. You can order one by calling 1-800-658-8891 number no longer in service. If you live outside the United States, call this other fucking number, which is probably no longer in service either. This has been a paid commercial announcement. We now return to your regularly scheduled game. Let's roll over. What do you want to roll over? Okay. What are you looking for, dust? Bitch, I want to go east. All right, so now we're in the courtyard. This is the courtyard of King Fudd's castle, a towering pile of towers and turrets that Fudd designed himself with the help of his court wizard. The entrance to the castle lies in the north, and next to it is a tall tower with a strange dish-shaped collection of wires on the top. There's a window high up in the tower and a garden at the base. The entrance to the barracks lies to the west, and the town itself lies to the south. You see a newspaper here. I'm going to go ahead and save in case the game poops out on me again. Let's go ahead and get the newspaper. You take the Sergeant at Arms, appears out of nowhere, and drags you to the Union Hall. He then takes up a position to the entrance that makes clear that no one is going to be able to get out until he steps aside. The Union Hall is a place where all knights come each morning, hoping to be assigned one day of the quest. It's a tired looking room with a trophy case in one corner and pictures of famous knights lining the walls. Eric elopes with pig. Ew. I love her. I won't give her up, says the knight. I've been seeing her in secret for over two years and finally decided to make an honest pig of her. Reading the uh, caption text is pretty quite, quite funny. A tornado touched down yesterday on Farmer Bretho, the cheap homestead. The barn and several outbuildings were flattened. Farmer, his daughter, and the daughter's apples were all unharmed. The livestock also seems to be unscathed, although one pig is reported to be very despondent. A 121-year-old woman gave birth to a two-headed baby yesterday while hang gliding in the Rim Mountains. I don't see what all the fuss is about, said Gretchen the Old and Wrinkled. All my children have two heads. 
got them scattered all over Taurus. And the classified reads, Bilbo, come home. All is forgiven. P.S. I sold the ring. Frodo. So reading the paper makes for some hoo-hoo, ha-ha, knee-slapping fun funs. Not sure if they ever have anything important. Your eye falls on one of the pictures. So Jasper the Hasty killed in the line of duty during the quest for the Dragon of Cabbage Patch. He was the first to track the infamous beast to its lair. He had snuck up behind the monster and lifted its tail to strike the killing blow. When without warning, the dragon broke wind and incinerated the brave knight on the spot. And look at that fancy equipment. In our day, we didn't have lances. We had long sticks that we sharpened with our teeth. And helmets, we used kitchen pots on our head. And hoped for the best. Alright folks, that wraps it up for the first episode of Eric the Unready. I hope you're enjoying it. If so, stay tuned for more in the next video, and the one after that, and maybe even possibly the one after that.